Welcome everybody. Uh, Steve Weil from Birding and Weil here, uh, Community Association Construction Defect Law, law Firm based in uh, San Diego, Costa Mesa and the Bay Area. You know, one of the goals of a construction defect, a CD case, is to obtain compensation for our clients who need to make repairs. But the end game is to actually make those repairs. And doing that requires a post-recovery team, uh, not just involving the lawyer, uh, the contractor, but frequently, and as we recommend, a construction manager. And one of the best ones around joining us today is uh, Chris Sigler of CL Sigler & Associates, based in Palm Desert and in uh, the South Bay, San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and Chris, uh, wanted to talk to you today about uh, the real world uh, when it comes to implementing uh, SB uh, 326 uh, and uh, you know, the balcony law. So today we weren't really gonna talk about the nuts and bolts of the law, but rather what it's like to implement it. But just so we're all on the same page. So the, the law civil code section 5551 uh, requires that an association hire professionals to inspect and test balconies uh, and to prepare a report by January 1, 2025. Now we know it's not just balconies, right? It's walking surfaces, uh, it's uh, stairways, it's um, stair surfaces, you know, that are uh, in the condominium buildings of more than three units and uh, six feet high, I think is the statute. And so what we're looking for here is building decay and dry rot. And of course, all of this arose out of the balcony tragedy over in uh, Berkeley at that apartment building. And so we do these inspections and then we prepare a report and then the board is gonna keep that report and it's gonna be used as a guide as they make future repairs. So that's kind of where we're starting today. Now, I know that you've been involved uh, from the beginning with this statute. Um, you and I have had several conversations about what do the words mean and how is it going to be impacted uh, you know, in the industry itself. So what would you say from your point of view are the biggest challenges you found uh, in implementing this statute? from the processing to the bidding of it, to the supervising of the repairs and to the making of the report? Well, I would, I would probably say it, you know, it's just as very similar to what we have with construction management when a, a client comes and HOA comes to us and says, we wanna fix our X, Y, Z, our balconies, our stairs. Uh, same kind of thing, the more information we get, the better, right? Um, the less information, then we've got to spend some time researching, analyzing, investigating, perhaps uh, destructively testing things. So the more information we get, the better. And for example, if a repairs uh, project has been done on bal and balconies were worked on 20 of however many, tell us, tell us what was done, give us whatever you've got. So uh, poor record keeping could come back and bite you a little bit if uh, if you haven't kept good records because that's the best thing. Give us good input, and I'll be able to uh, you know tell you what's going going on. How about challenges in the inspection process itself? What have you run into there? Well, uh, sometimes access, like some are too blocked into like against a creek with fences and you get to hop fences or go through the unit. Uh, that's that's a drag, uh, slows things down. We keep that in mind. Uh, Multi-story buildings, you know, access points are, are tough. Uh, you know, how much can we ladder to? I do have one that is just gigantic, 864 balconies, but there's a full staff uh, at that one. So they're going to help us get through the upper units and things like that. But those are, those are the challenges getting at them. You know, it's interesting. There are so many different kinds of condo projects. Some are new, some are old, uh, some are large, some are small, some have similar balconies, some, some have different balconies. So how do you, when you're trying to tell the client how long the inspection process will take and what it will cost, how, how do all of those factors figure in and what are the factors? Uh, there's, there, there are a lot, of, a lot of moving parts here, Steve, a lot of moving parts. Um, one is the inventory. And so if uh, let's just say that you've got 10 buildings in your complex and they're all different, it can be very challenging. 
if you've got 10 buildings at your complex and they're all identical except for maybe the two at the ends and a clubhouse or something that's going to help because you can say okay you can you know we get our inventory on that building count it times 10 um all of that so having uh that information is is going to be an impact uh in getting the proposal how long it takes uh and it's also a sign of let's just say you know i've been doing this a while right so the less information that's provided is a sign that perhaps um it's going to be a, a you know a tough one to convince to do the right thing just been my experience so chris what you know it occurs to me you're giving this proposal is it a fixed fee? Is that possible? Or is it more like a range? Is it on a T&M basis? Well, hey, the way we do it is a fixed fee. I do it in three different stages. Uh, the first stage is, uh, you know, I, we do a full inventory of every component of each typical balcony. Uh, we, we inventory the, the oddballs. Um, we look for water, all the water, what are the waterproofing guys? So we check all the flashings and all of those systems. And um, there's, uh, you know, there are things that will be a sign as to, uh, you know, what we, how many we're going to have to look at and whether or not they have a, a solid underside or whether the open frame really impacts things and how to get at it really impacts things. So um, all of that comes in. So what I do is I come out with a fixed fee. Stage one is inventory. Stage two is that really deep inspections where my SE, my structural engineer, and the official inspector who stamps the reports, he's we've prepared everything and we've got the portals ready and we use our boroscope and we drill and put our boroscope up there. But if we see signs, <clears throat> this is on a, a stucco one. If we see signs of moisture, we've got to go further. So we report that right away. So all of that, that's stage two. Stage three is the final reporting stage where you get all those goodies that you talked about, but getting a guidebook about what to do now. I want to come back to that report in a minute, but so is there anything about this process that surprised you? No, no, not really. Um, and, you know, I wish that I wish there was a little more specificity. You know, it's le it's left a lot of us kind of scratching our heads and talking to each other, the consultants about, is this how you read that? Is this little things like you got a balcony that is 80% over a living space, which means it doesn't need to be inspected. It's got a stick out of 12 inches. And because of the way, so that 12 inches is like a little landing pad with, you know, whatever, it's got a viewpoint or something. And because it sticks out even 12 inches, 18 inches, it can't be exempted. Can't, it sticks out beyond the building line. Ah, we live in a reasonable world. Come on guys. But yeah. the way you have to stick with how it's written, right? Yeah. Um, you and I have worked on projects in the past where there were some significant safety issues involved. And I can remember one where the city, I think red tagged a couple of balconies um, and this statute, of course, addresses life safety issues. Have you run into any where you were so concerned uh, about the use of these balconies? And if so, what did you do? Very good question. Uh, it's, you know, if you have an experienced inspector, I know I can sniff this stuff out. I can look at something and say, ah, hmm, I have a real concern about this. We had a... a uh, a balcony in, in Menlo Park that was a fully cantilever balcony, six foot cantilever, beautiful place. Uh, but boy, they said, hey, it's, it's, they want us to look at this one. It's kind of leaning. It's like uh, when I got there and I am not an alarmist, I'm like, ooh, this is really, they put up my my level, got some tapes out. Uh, this is way, this is, uh-huh. You need to put a post in here as soon as you can today, tomorrow. Let these people know they should not use the balcony until you repair it, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how we handle that. And then we make it the number, those types of things, life safety, a priority. And in some cases, if they're that important, like let's say it's the only way of ingress or egress from a unit um, in terms of stairs or something like that, and it's a stair, um, you know, we've, it's like, no, we've got to do this like right now. So you got to carve it off and do a little mini 
emergency project if it's that bad. But if it's if it can be held up um, the way we report uh, to the building department is when we apply when the uh, client applies for a permit or the contractor and the team apply for a permit to do work. The report won't get you to that plan, but it'll get you to the guidebook as to what you should do. So it sounds like, see, the way I read the statute and the way I think other people do, they sort of make an assumption. You see this dangerous balcony and you're running down to the building department and then you're jumping through all the building department hoops. But it sounds to me like you've shortened that a lot and made it less complicated uh, by calling it out internally first. <laughs> yeah. Uh... You, we're not, you know, you don't want your inspector to be uh, the guy who, who gets you in trouble. Uh, he wants to protect, you want somebody to protect you. And that's how it should be protected is uh, technically, yes, we are supposed to report to the building department uh, and certainly to the client. I always go to the client immediately. It just so happened at that moment, I was standing next to the client. So that was pretty easy. Um, and I gave them directions, followed up with an email and photos and all of that. And this is before I was even contracted. It was like, ooh, because we got to protect, you know, we're in this together. We got to protect each other, right? And you're, but while you're doing this, you, you've braced up that unit, right? You're not you're closing off the slider. You're not letting the residents use, use that, right? Yeah. I recommended that they immediately tell that uh, the, the unit upstairs to please not use their balcony and have a 42 inch piece of plywood that's a code height uh, put across the sliding glass door so they can still get air. Um, but please don't go out there. We're gonna put a temporary post in. We don't want it to fall down or hurt anyone um, and anywhere. So please, know. yeah. So Chris, last question uh, as we wind up uh, today. So what goes into this final report and what's its purpose? Well, the purpose is to, uh, first of all, identify what the exterior elevated elements are, the EEEs they talk about. Because people go to the balcony bill, but yeah, you talked about walkways, stairways, and landings. If they're wood framed, and yes, you said it, six feet above the ground, um, they need to be inspected. So you'll have a full inventory of those out of that report. Um, and sorry. And um you will also have uh, a, a statement of where its current, where the balcony's current condition are, like a general summary statement, and then prioritize groups as needed that say these are right now, these are got to get at them right away, and these are you know, and you get a plan, and then what is the remaining useful life, and how do we extend that and maintain these balconies? So they get a game plan. Uh, but it's a general game plan. So let's say that there is, uh, you know, a safety issue that needs to have the plans drawn and put into the building department right away. <clears throat> well, that, um, that you need to then, you know, that's a whole nother little mini project to then get that taken care of. And I can see that. All right, listen, we're out of time. I uh, really want to thank you, Chris, for um, joining us today. It's interesting talk to a guy who's uh, actually uh, walking the walk and talking the talk. Thanks again. Thank you very much for having me, Steve. Bye -bye. Take care.